everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with this video. If you've noticed, there's been a couple posts that I put in the community um, so that you guys can choose which one of these you will see me create. Um, it's going to have a little bit of music and then step by step and explaining and all that fun stuff. So we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. So I had posted a picture of these three, um, we'll call them panels or tiles. Um, and I had also said that it's really cool on what these came from. So to me, I just found this fascinating. Maybe not everyone will, but I did. So. For those of you that have been around, you know every Sunday we get together and we tangle. And I do a little bit of uh, Zen Tangle on Sundays, very calm, very relaxing. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher. And I'm always looking for ways to incorporate different ideas or techniques into our card making sphere or our paper crafting sphere um, because they are interchangeable and we can put that into other things that we enjoy doing. Um, you know, now we have cards that you can stitch on. So if there's that cross stitcher that loved that craft and could be mesmerized by card making, you can have the best of both worlds. I think Zentangle is a wonderful art to incorporate into your cards. Um, it's, it's different, it's something unique, um, and that's what we're all about, to continue to try different things. I have a very good friend, a very good, I, at least I think it's a very good friend, um, and as the days go by in the months um, and even the years, uh, we are getting closer and closer. And he had posted uh, some stamp sets. Yes, I am saying stamp sets. And the moment I saw them, I saw Zentangle. And yes, they're stamp sets. And these are also stamp sets that we could possibly struggle with you know what do i do with this what what could this be um how can i how can i bring this in to uh my card making and with these stamp sets there are so many techniques this is what i came up this is actually three different stamps now when i post this in the community i had a picture of these three and i had numbers associated and i had everyone choose the one that they wanted to see me complete um, in a video this one won this was number three so we are going to i'll be showing this to you in a little bit this is actually a round stamp. This is a rectangle stamp. And this is a square stamp. And you're all probably sitting there saying, okay, Dad, shut up and show us the stamps. Okay, well, first, um, the person who, again, who I consider to becoming an even bigger and stronger friend is Anthony from Anthony's Paper Crafts. I have shown his products here before. Um, I love his products. His stamps are just extremely unique. And again, each company is unique, but I gravitate uh, towards these. And he has a wonderful mind for the creator. So without further ado, because you know me, I'm going to gab. So this is going to be a long video and I'm going to gab again. If it's not for you, you have choices. Just say. These are the stamps. We have seen stamps like this before to a certain degree. But when you look at these stamps, the first things that 
we sometimes look at and say, okay, well, how would I create with this? Yes, I could, I could stamp these onto a panel in heat emboss. Um, I could stamp them on a panel and do a heat resist, <clears throat> or excuse me, an emboss resist. Um, I could take these, stamp these on pattern paper and do some paper piecing. Um, we can stamp these and in a previous video for Birch Press, I had, um, I had shown, um, the neurographic art where, you know, we round these corners and then we color them in. These are great to stamp on cardstock and use your any medium of choice for coloring, whether that's colored pencils, watercolors, alcohol markers, crayons, Sharpies, anything, watercolor brush markers, anything you've got, these would be great to be colored in. But when I saw these, I immediately saw my Zen Tangle and how we could work with a stamp that's like this that's an outline type stamp and incorporate this beautiful art so that we can get these two forms of art and creativity together and wow the possibilities are endless i think this type of art too is perfect for that crafter that doesn't want to put a huge investment into this craft let's face it card making yes there is an investment that we could get ourselves into guilty and that's with any craft you can get yourself so involved into it that it can just get bigger 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 and bigger but if you take zentangle and put it into card making you will still have limited supplies and you're still going to create beautiful cards. If this is going to be just under my simplicity series where we just take our pattern paper, let our pattern paper do the work and create beautiful cards with the panels. We can take stamps like these. And again, these three stamps could be those stamps in your arsenal. And that's it. And you will be able to create thousands of different versions of these cards with just these three stamps, incorporating the Zentangle method. So again, the panel that won was this one. This was number three, and this is our circle stamp here. Now, of course, I am definitely going to link down to Anthony's store below. Um, please make sure you check that out to see all of the wonderful different stamp sets that he has um, and they just range. I am a huge fan of the Christmas, but then again, I love Christmas. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good Christmas stamp um, or die or anything Christmas. Um, so these will be down there um, and I will have a code down there as well uh, for free shipping um, now the free shipping is for us only so you know, i apologize for that um, but there will at least be a free shipping code down there for you okay so i'm going to grab my supplies so that we can make this panel here and i'm going to need my stamp and i will be right back Okay, I have gathered up my supplies, so let's review. Now, in this one, I do have a brown that's going through this. I'm going to keep this all with my black Micron, and this is the pen that I'm going to be using. This is the pen that I always use when it comes to Zentangling, either an O2 or an O1. Um, I am liking the O2 a little bit better. Um, to use an O1, you need a light hand. Me, <laughs> hello. Um, I do CPR with my stamps. So um, I do like the O2. I've got my graphite. I've got my white chalk. And I've got my blending stumps for each. And you can see I've marked this one with a W so that I know 
um, to only use that with my white chalk. Now, the paper that I used for this was watercolor paper. It was Canson XL water, uh, watercolor paper. Um, absolutely love it uh, to do Zentangles on because um, I knew this was definitely going to be bigger than the tiles that are currently out for Zentangle, whether it's the Zendala, which is the circle, um, or the square. Um, but this is what um, I, I wanted to make sure that I had this and then I didn't know if I was going to expand. And again, it just takes over as you start tangling. So this, again, this is just watercolor paper. Um, Canson XL watercolor. Um, and there's also another watercolor paper that I found where you can get 250 sheets, uh, 9 by 12 It's awesome. I have that linked in my Amazon store, and I love tangling on that. It is a great alternative um, when it comes to Zentangling. But the paper I want to try today is, you've all seen this before, especially if you, for those of you that have been here before, um, I loved my Strathmore. 400 series mixed media toned papers, whether it's toned gray, tan, or blue. Um, I love the thickness of it. I love the tooth that it gives when I use my colored pencils, and that's what I use this for. I'm going to see how this goes when it comes to tangling. So this is going to be a first. I did choose the gray of the mixed media, and that pad measures six by eight. And I'm going to keep it the full size of that paper. I already have this in my Misty. So what I'm using, and you can see, you don't see these lines. Because if you look at this, you know, you, you've got these lines that are going through. And yes, for the most part, I did go over them with my black pen. However, if we look at the rectangle all right this has x's and this has lines going through it i'm going to bring this up hopefully i don't get out of focus but you cannot see those lines anymore you can't see this one that's coming across here or this one coming across here and if you do it is extremely 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 faint and the same thing for the other one so the rectangle shows that more um, but it's going to be the same thing that I'm using. So for this, one of the two inks that I love, and we use them when we do no line water coloring or no line color pencil coloring or alcohol marker. And those are those really pale inks. The big ones are Simon Says Fog or Barely Beige. Now, of course, if we're on watercolor and we're doing some watercoloring, we pull in that antique linen distress ink because then it just dissolves as it goes through. But for colored pencils and markers, these, these are the ones that we'll choose or maybe an ink on three fade out and you can use that one as well. I did choose to go with these because again, it can stretch through your stash. And when I did this one here, I chose the Barely Beige. Yes, because it's ivory paper. Ivory, you know, it's, it's an off-white um, ivory paper. For this one, I'm going to use Fog. Now, again, I am going to stamp this multiple times. So I have my 6x8 sheet in the Misty, and I've got my magnet holding it down, and I'm going to stamp this a couple times. I just want to make sure that I can see the lines. And I'm just going to press down. I want to make sure that I have even pressure, so I am going to pull in my pressing tool here. I'm going to lift. And that is very well seen. Um, and I think you guys would be able to see it as well. I'm just going to give it a quick one more stamp just to make sure. And I think that's perfect. And this is going to vanish. Now, more so in this one because I do go over those lines. But again, with the rectangle, they did go away completely. Um, and it got lighter and lighter as the days went on. So how I'm going to do this, I don't want... I 
when it comes to zentangling, when I perform, when or not perform, the when I do my zentangle art, I get very quiet. It's it's a very calming experience for me. It's it's very relaxing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each section as we get to it. So this is going to be a section. These outer parts here are going to be a section. And then this ring is going to be a section as well. So as we get to each of those, I'm going to talk through it, through one section and what I'm doing, what I'm referring to, what it can resemble in the Zentangle world, what you could use, and so forth. And then for the rest of them, you'll still see me do this, but you're going to hear music because I, I can't talk as I'm doing this. And then the same thing, when I come into these areas, I'm going to come back, talk through this, what that is, what it's comparable to, what other tangles it could be, and so forth. And then again, the rest of them, music, and then the same thing with the outer ring. All right, so that's how we're going to do this. Okay, so for our sections here, so you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these, of course, are triangles. And I'm going to zoom in so that you can see. There we go. So, of course, these are triangles. Now, in Zentangle, you can have a tangle that you're doing, or you can have what's called a fragment. I'm actually going to be using a, a tangle, per se, um, and then, but since these here are this, because this is actually, since it's a shape, it's a reticula. This could be a grid here, but these are reticulas. And you can actually do certain fragments in here. Didn't want to get too much into the fragments because that's not the one that you all chose. This actually has more fragments than any of them. So what I'm going to start is something that is very close to Tripoli. All right, so for each of the triangles, and again, I'm just going to do one. So I'm going to choose one. Make sure I'm in view here. I'm going to outline or ink that line that we stamped. I turn my tile. You will see that my hand is very rarely going to move out of this position. My paper or my tile will continuously turn for my hand. My hand is always in a place of comfort. I'm now going to put arcs in here, C curves, and I'm going to do it to each side. So I'm going to come down on this one. I'm going to do that to these two points, and then I'm going to do this to the bottom. That is very close to Tripoli. Now on the inside, I'm going to put what we call perfs. These are orbs. And I'm going to squish an orb right in here. I want it to fit right in there. And I'm going to give it a little weight by going over it twice. I'm going to slightly turn and I'm going to put an orb next to the first one. Again, just squishing that in, not crossing the lines, and I'm just going to keep on going until I get to the end. I'll turn my tile, and I'm going to do the same thing, but go this way. Again, squishing that orb in there, not crossing the lines, In these areas in here, I'm going to fill them in. I'm going to ink them in using my pen. And again, we take our time, even when we're inking like this. I'm going to fill in this point down here. And then I'm 
going to do this to the other side and if you hear those motorcycles I'm so sorry I'm slightly turn and then just do the upper portion and that one triangle is done now I'm going to continue through and do the rest of these triangles Thank you. 
Okay, so we have, <clears throat> excuse me, that center piece, that center medallion done. Grabbing my water here. Okay. So now we're going to work on this area here, this, this last piece when it comes to the stamp itself. And what I'm going to work on first are these lines that are coming down. Now, there's um, a couple different tangles. One, I think, is called garlic cloves. Um, the other one, onions, I think. Um, and that's what I'm really going to put here. All right. And it's just going to be a section of it. So how that works is I'm going to go over this line, but just put the ever slow, ever so slightest curve around that line that we can possibly do. So it looks like a little rice shape. And I am going to start at the same point, come down and land at the same point. And I am just going to keep on doing that and you can see that my curve is getting more and more rounded. Once I have that round shape, I'm going to stop and now I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to continue to do those same strokes. Notice I don't care how many I have on one side to the other. Didn't count that. And again, I'm always starting in the same spot and I'm landing at the same spot when I do those curves. And there we go. We have our points. Whoops, let me come down a little bit. So now we have our four done for that. Now I'm going to work in the areas next to each of those. We'll call them poofs. Let's call them poofs. And what I'm going to put in here is called floors. And yes, these are called garlic cloves. That's what we're going with. All right. I'm going to put in floors. So floors is a grid tangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my lines. First, I want to ink this one side. So you can see I went from this point to this point. And now I'm just going to put create my grid. Lines don't have to be straight. I'm going to turn once I have those in, and now I'm going to come across. So you can see I'm creating 
that grid pattern. Where this grid intersects at these points, I am going to put a diamond. So let me see if I can really zoom in on this one. So I'm going to come across, come down, and just put a square. But again, because of the way that it's sitting on the lines, it's looking like a diamond. And I'm going to do that at each intersection. And I don't want them too big. I want to keep them small. And there we go. That is one side of floors. Now I'm going to do that in each of the sections. Let me come back out again just a little bit. In each of these outer sections around the garlic cloves. All right, so here we go.
Okay, so now we have, we could stop here. We have the stamp tangled. This is the entire stamp. So we're done. But let's go one more step because we can always add to this. And that is the beauty of the Zentangle art. So I'm going to put a frame that's around this. And what it's comprised of is flux, which, yes, is it's my favorite tangle. Almost it's very difficult for me to not put flux in every tile I do. I'm just saying. And tipple. Tipple is a great filler. And I just love the way that it looks um, with flux to fill in these beautiful leaves um, that are created. So I'm going to show a couple, a couple rounds here. And... I start at I started at this point here and flux is it's a teardrop it's it's just a beautiful teardrop so I'm gonna follow this curve a little bit and then I'm gonna come up and come back down and then I'm going to do that again and I'm going to do it all along this curved edge and I'll keep turning my tile and just put a flux nestled in. So you can see I'm starting where I'm ending with that flux. Again, still following that curve and you can see I'm coming up to the end and I'm gonna match them and now they're linked I'm going to now do another row of flux and this one's just gonna come out just a little bit but we can have fun with this one we can have it curve in different ways if we want but I'm just putting it just in that section where we started and ended the previous row of flux. And now we have our second row of our flux. Now, by all means, you can add more if you want. I do love to add uh, more flux um, when it comes to the pieces. Can have them overlap.
And now I'm going to add the tipple. The tipple is nothing more than an orb. So wherever they're, where they meet, I'm going to put just a few tipples. Could be three, could be five. It's whatever I think looks good in that area. And then when it's next to the flux, I'm going to fill that in. And we're not done with the flux yet because there's more that we can do there. But I'm just going to continue to add some tipples.
Okay, and we are now all colored in. So let me zoom out so that you can see this a little better. I'm going to put my cap on so my pen doesn't dry out. And you can see, again, we have Perk. This is Tripoli that's surrounding it. Garlic cloves, floors, flux, and tipple. Now, for the flux, what I like to do with flux, it's kind of a couple things. So on these ones that are the regular size, the ones we started out with, I like to put a line and three dots up the center or two, whatever my pen does. And you can see, even for this, I am still turning my tile. My hand stays in that position that is comfortable for me. And again, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It's a cute little squiggly line. You can see I am skipping those larger ones that I did. So for these larger ones that are on the outside, I like to add a tangle that's called fescue. And all it is, it's a line and then it comes back on itself and then you shade that end in. That's all it is, let's do that again. A line, come back on itself, shade it in. And then I'm gonna put a third one in there. And again, just a line and you're coming back in on that end and you're just coloring it in. There we go. And you can see when you first glance at this, in this section here, I was going a different way, but I chose to finally then take these corners this way. But when you first look at it, you really can't tell that you have that there. Again, that's the beauty of it. I mean, you could keep on just tangling right off that page. Um, when it comes to this. But the best part, the shading. Gotta love the shading. The shading brings this piece to life. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in my graphite and I'm just gonna put graphite down in certain areas. So in floors, I'm gonna outline it and I'm gonna go around the cloves or the garlic cloves and I'm going to go to the top and the bottom of the garlic cloves. For the Tripoli and Perk, I'm going to come out from the center and you can see I'm not coloring, I am scribbling. I am scribbling this down 
just putting this down, not caring how it's looking or what it's going to do. And then on each of these in perk, I'm just going to put a little bit of graphite on a side of it. And again, we do not worry about light sources when it comes to Zentangle. And then at the base of each of the fluxes, I'm going to put a little bit of graphite below um, there as well. So I'm going to continue and I will come back and show you how we blend all of this out. Okay, here's part two of the magic, and this is a tortillon. I like to call them blending stumps because I will stumble over tortillon. <laughs> and now I am just going to blend this graphite. So in these areas here, I'm just going to go up and down and blend it. And you can see it just gets that soft hue of the graphite. Just going around the lines, pulling out at the bottom and the tops. And I will say this, that this does beautifully on this paper. But, and while I'm going to do this while I continue to blend, you can tangle on anything. 
you've got copy paper, you can tangle on it. You got a ballpoint pen, you can tangle with that. Um, watercolor paper is great. You want to go. Um, a lot of people like hot press if they're tangling on that. I do like either the Canson XL cold press or, um, as I said, 250 sheets. Oh, how can you go wrong on that? Um, and I have that listed. It's, it's just a wonderful price. Um, and I cut it down into any shape or size that I want. Um, I think it's by Packin. It's listed as a You Create Watercolor um, paper. Comes in 9 by 12 or 250 sheets of 6 by 9. So it's really nice. But you can see, I am just, again, I am not worried about a clear blend. I am just going over these strokes. And you can see, it's getting this 3D look. This piece is just absolutely coming to life, which is awesome and wonderful. And a lot of times you do have a lot of graphite still on your blending stump so you can use what's there. Now I'm going to go into these fluxes and just real quick blend those out. I'm hardly even lifting my blending stump. I am just going across this page to get this down. And what I'm trying to say is, again, this is something else. Don't worry about perfection. Don't worry about straight lines. Just have fun. Don't worry about where that light source is. You do not need to worry about that light source. You put your highlight, put your shade where you want that to be. When it comes to since we don't worry about the um, light source, we look at light as what is higher than something else. So what, where can we get that dimension um, that comes in? Now I'm just going to swirl around the outside of this piece. And that just gives it a little shadow. Um, you know, what looks further, uh, farther away from us, what's closest to us. And that I'm going to show um, to you very soon. So if you guys have stuck with me this long, this is awesome. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying this. And I hope that you give this a try. And if you do, I would love to see your art. I have a group just for tangles, for Zen Tangle. Um, it's called Desiree Tangles with Paper. So there you go. Um, and there's all kinds of fun stuff that we do in there exclusive to that group. So I hope you'll join us because I would love, absolutely love to see your artwork in this. But in there we do uh, Facebook Lives where we talk about Zentangle, um, exclusive videos there, uh, a Tangle Zoom is coming up. Um, just know that you do have to answer questions to get into the group and if you don't answer them and answer them correctly. Yeah, just saying. Um, you won't have um, admittance into it. Um, again, I, I want this, this is a completely safe group that we have. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think you all know the white chalk. Here is where I'm saying we bring something closer or we take something back. So here, I'm just going to put some white chalk just right in the center 
of these bands of Tripoli. And I'm just going to put a little bit on this larger perk. And I'm going to put a little bit in there. And again, you can see, I'm just, it, it's just a scribble that's going on in here. There is nothing specific going on with that as I go off screen. And again, I'm going to come across my garlic cloves. And then when it comes to these larger flux, I'm going to put some chalk at the ends. And again, you can see there is nothing specific there. I'm going to grab my other blending stump and I'm just going to go across that. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing it into the paper. I'm smoothing out those extra harsh areas, but you can tell I'm not you know, constantly going back and forth so that it goes away. Um, there's a lot of times, especially with the chalk, I love to use my finger. I'm just saying. And again, I'm just real quick going over the garlic cloves. I'm going to come in on top of these flux just to smooth that out. And then I'm just going to lightly go over because now I've made the floors looked curve and that's what I'm going for to give it that curve look and I just want to add a little bit in here And there you go. This came from a stamp. I still have it in my stamp positioning tool. This came from a stamp. It's relaxing. Maybe you don't like to color. Maybe you don't like to do this. Maybe this is something that you would enjoy. But again, when I saw these stamps, by Anthony's Paper Craft, it was the first thing that I saw. First thing that I saw. So, <coughs> excuse me as I cough. Oh my goodness. Now the last thing that I have to do is I must sign. So I am going to, we call this a chop. I usually just put my initials down there. Or somewhere in the piece and then I'm also going to sign yes that is my signature it is absolutely horrible and today's date that I'm actually filming this is 7 25 22 so July 25th 22 so guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, he's got three beautiful stamps um, that are available. He has the circle, the square, and also the rectangle. Again, free shipping US is down into the video description. I'll have a link to my Facebook group as well. And if any of you are also interested in Zentangle, I have recently just launched a course on Teachable for the introduction of Zentangle. It's just over three hours packed full of information so that you will know the history and how to get yourself started in Zentangle. So I'll have that link down below as well. But most importantly, I will have the link to his shop and these stamps specifically. So I encourage you to check it out. I encourage you to look Look at what you have um, and look at other stamps that you could do this as well. Remember, 
every Sunday we tangle together. So I hope you are enjoying those videos and enjoying how Zen Tangle art comes about one stroke at a time. Enjoy your day. Enjoy creating your art. I hope I gave you yet just one more way to create your art. But most of all, and always remember, always be creative, guys. And I will talk to you in the next one. Till then, take care.